we must recognize those countries that have sanctioned medicines not only as the viola violators of human rights, but the professional killers of human beings. Iran has been in the eye of the coronavirus storm. Although the country has the best medical resources in the region, the number of confirmed cases and deaths continues to climb. The mortality rate is also higher than in most other countries. However, as Iran works to contain the outbreak, US sanctions are doing the opposite. Iran's healthcare structure has been impaired since 2018, when the US reimposed sanctions and unilaterally withdrew from the nuclear deal. Almost one third of Iran's pharmaceutical raw materials and 70% of its medical equipment rely on imports. In 2016, one year after countries reached the nuclear deal, the EU exported medicines worth 920 million euros to Iran. In 2018, the number dropped to 790 million. The blockage means hopelessness for some patients. <laughs> But during the outbreak, when Iran is already short of key medical supplies, the Trump administration not only refused to lift sanctions, but even imposed fresh sanction measures. The president has been very clear. We will continue to apply economic sanctions. On March 17, the U.S. Treasury blacklisted nine entities for engaging in significant transactions to trade in Iranian petrochemicals. Trump's maximum pressure campaign has effectively choked off Iran's oil and gas exports and crippled its economy. A lack of testing kits due to sanctions has exacerbated Iran's epidemic situation. The US government has vengefully refused to lift its unlawful and collective punishment, making it virtually impossible for us to even buy medicine and medical equipment. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has claimed that humanitarian assistance to Iran is wide open. But, faced with the danger of secondary sanctions, many banks and companies are still reluctant to trade humanitarian goods with Iran. Cutting off Iran's access to dollars while saying that Iran can buy medicines is like telling a poor man to buy whatever he wants without money. Foreign Ministry spokesperson Syed Abbas Mousavi has even accused the U.S. of conducting medical terrorism in the country. The problem, the problem is that America has politicized the matter. The problem is that America doesn't realize that humanitarian aid and medical assistance has nothing to do with politics, that the virus doesn't know borders or ethnicity or politics. What's worse, not only has the US refused to change its maximum pressure strategy, which has hampered Iran's epidemic efforts, hawkish politicians such as Pompeo and National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien even see this as an opportunity to bend Iran's knee. As the region is busy battling the virus, the Pentagon is planning military action to destroy Iranian proxies in Iraq, further destabilizing the hard-hit region. We are watching it very closely, and if something bad happens, it's going to be very painful for the other side. Not only Iran, but countries like Cuba, Venezuela, and Syria are also finding it difficult to cope with the epidemic with US sanctions in place. What the US should understand is that while it intends to use sanctions to pressure the Iranian government, it is the Iranian people who are suffering. Pain anywhere? No. This is not the time to be an opportunist and push a geopolitical agenda. If the US does not get its priorities right, it risks stymieing other countries' efforts against the pandemic. Politics is not an excuse to disregard human life.